You know, I remember when Google was new, they had this trite motto, don't be evil, which people would say, well, of course, don't be evil. But here we are in 2018, and this same Google is saying it will not work with the U.S. Pentagon for ethical reasons, but it is deeply working with China on this kind of social censorship where your internet account is tied to your phone, is tied to your personal info. And it's not just deep censorship, it's really real-time tracking of every single human in China. So that's cool by Google. Working for the Pentagon is not. And I think some of these Chinese tactics that they're learning are being imported to America and around the world. What do you make of that? Uh, well, one of the striking parts of the document was uh, where they talk about the censorship requests they receive from foreign governments. And uh, they show a massive, massive, according to their own internal research, they show a massive spike after 2016. Uh, so certainly there's a lot more pressure on uh, these tech companies now from state governments to censor their platforms. But Google doesn't say it's a bad thing. In fact, later on in the document, they say that uh, if Google wants Google and other tech companies, if they want to expand globally, continue global expansion, they do have to shift towards censorship. Uh, and you know, Google told us in their when we asked WeChat for comment, they told us that this document doesn't reflect company policy; it's just research. But in the case of China, they're developing this new censored search engine, Dragonfly, they call it. Uh, that's going to have blacklisted search terms that the Chinese communists don't like. It's going to tie users to their users search to their uh, phone numbers. Uh, so clearly, they are following the recommendations of this briefing in that particular instance. Yeah, um, it, it's incredibly tempting for Google, for Facebook, for Twitter to comply with the Chinese government because it's not just getting in to the world's most populous market. It's getting in ahead of or instead of your competitors. I mean, Google and Facebook are doing enormously well in Europe, in America, around the world. But it's not just about getting into China. It's about getting into China and keeping out your rivals. So it's almost a race to see who will be the most submissive. And if you, you know, if, if the Chinese Communist Party comes with 20 demands and Facebook will meet 10 of them, but you'll meet 15, well, it's not just that you're both getting in. You're the, you'll be the only one in that green field. It'll be like a, a, it's like a gold rush, and you'll be the first to be able to stake it out. I, I think that's, that's what the motivation is here. It's money and power. And anyone who thinks that these tech billionaires aren't motivated by those, I think, is, is deluded. What do you think? Uh, I agree, and I'm, uh, that, that's, you've certainly got their incentives down there. Uh, but it's quite terrifying to uh, imagine the merging of state power with the power of these tech companies. These companies know everything about you, everything you search for, uh, everything you email. They monitor your emails even. Uh, they they can have unprecedented control over the information we see. And for them to work with authoritarian regimes like this, is, it should be very, very concerning to everyone. Because mm -hmm. this is a power that you know authoritarian regimes of the past, like the Soviet Union, couldn't, have, couldn't even have imagined. Uh, so it, it will be an entirely new kind of all-seeing, all-knowing totalitarianism uh, if Google were to give in to too many uh, requests by a government like China's. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show, weekdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. Every day I do a monologue, interview a guest, and read my fan mail and my hate mail. To subscribe, go to therebel.media slash shows.